I'm Pastor Gaylord Dutton, and this is Preach It, Preach It. Keeping the word alive. Welcome to Preacher Preacher, Keeping the Word Alive. I'm Pastor Gaylord Dutton with my co-host, Elder Jamal Dutton. This is a fast-paced show designed to be informative, inspirational, energetic, and full of the power of God's word. Our format is simple yet clear. We discuss local, national, and global topics from a biblical perspective. Our goal is to provide insight, opinions, direction, and correction utilizing God's word. Each topic will be discussed for a set time after which a buzzer sounds and we move on to the next topic. So family, it's time to preach it, preach it. Our show this week is dealing with a subject that is taboo on Sunday mornings, sex in the kingdom. <laughs> Elder Jamal, <laughs> as usual, you're going to have to give us your thoughts on this, man. This is a hot topic. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, um, even before we get into, you know, the whole purpose of yes, sex. Yes. I think it's important just to iterate that, you know, sex isn't dirty. It That's isn't right. that little thing that you do, you know, secretive in the closet. But sex, you know, it comes from God. That's true. And, you know, just this is proof, you know, that the thing that sex produces, which is one of the primary reasons of sex, is life. You know, That's Jesus right. said, I come that you may have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So, you know, anything that comes from God produces life. Mm -hmm. And sex, you know, produces life. That's right. That's and right. if you get into, you know, the Songs of Solomon, that you mean you can really, you know, find out what God's, you know, intentions or what God's purpose of sex is, you know, intimacy, exactly. you know, companionship. Yes. You know, yes. all these different things, you know, that's, you know, the true purpose of what sex is about. You know, I believe God designed sex in the kingdom for us to, you know, for a husband and wife to have pleasure. Right. It, you're supposed to have pleasure. Right. That time of intimacy, you know, showing affection towards one, you know, one another and everything. Um, when Adam, <laughs> all the way back in the garden, uh -oh. when, when Adam, <laughs> when God said <laughs> in chapter two, hey, look, look, hey, I'm going to make a help meet for man. Mm -hmm. There were animals uh, that God created. OK. Right. Adam said, no, 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 no. Yeah, this ain't it. The horse wasn't doing it. The cow, none of that. The lion, <laughs> the bear. <laughs> but when right. he woke up after his surgery <laughs> and saw that woman, mm -hmm. he said, oh, yeah, yeah. this is the one. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now, this is the yeah. one. And even in, that, uh, in the scripture, when you really read it and visit it, it emphasized now. Right, right. Now this is the one. <laughs> Not the animal. Yeah, not all animal stuff. <laughs> and I believe Adam had sex after he saw it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I believe he got it in, brother. <laughs> you know why? Because right. God designed sex in the right, kingdom to right, be that way. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, you know, I believe that's one of the reasons why God made it so pleasurable. Oh, so man. that we can produce like God. Right. One of the commandments he said, be fruitful, brother, and multiply. How are you going to be fruitful <laughs> and multiply? By, you know, being intimate and having sex. <laughs> that's true. Right, right. right. And we want, we want, and I'm glad that you started out. Um, talking about how sex isn't taboo. Yeah, it's, it's clean. Not, it is. You know, it's clean. And that's the only way we can procreate. Right, right. It's and a tool. I, and I believe, you know, there is, as you know, covering Apostle Donald taught us, how you can have sex, you know, be it be a flesh to flesh. That's right. Or you can have it spirit to spirit. That's right. And, you know, flesh to flesh is just when you're just pretty much trying to gratify yourself, pretty much trying to seek your own pleasure, right. not really taking into consideration 
your wife. Right. But spirit, the spirit is more of a deeper level. Right. It's when you coming together, you coming to be one. You know, God said the two shall become one. That's right. And you become one through that intimacy. Oh man, you can tell me we're out of time on this one, brother. Oh, you was just man. getting good, man. No, just... <laughs> oh, but um, up next, we're going to talk about you know, can one restore their virginity? Can mm. one restore, restore their virginity? Well, right. Elder, you know, I, I think they, I believe they can. For one, you, we have the blood of Jesus. Yeah. You know, in the blood of Jesus, you know, he cleanses all sin. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you have his love there as well, which covers a multitude of sin. Right. So it doesn't matter if you, prior to coming to Christ, you was a, you know, a, you know, a, a, a prostitute. Mm -hmm. A um, you know a a a, a gigolo doesn't matter right, how right. perverted you were before coming to Christ. Once you come to Christ, and that blood is applied on your life, yeah. you become a brand new creature. Right, old things are passed <laughs> away; all things become new. Right. So I believe once you in Christ through the blood of Jesus, anyone can become a virgin again. Right. I think you hit it. I mean, you know that's important and. The person, I mean, they really have to take a hold of that right. and realize that, you know, these old things are passed away mm -hmm. and behold, these are new things, mm -hmm. you know, so you can be restored. Mm -hmm. You can be, you know, restored back to that place of purity. Mm -hmm. It may not necessarily be from a physical standpoint, but even more importantly, from a spiritual standpoint, you can be restored to that place of purity, that place of virginity. Well, Elder, what about if someone... Uh, comes to Christ and they get their virginity restored, okay, and then they fall again. Right. What are the steps to get, you know, that? Yeah. Virginity I mean, and, and that's that's restored. often a, an issue that you know you find a lot of saints, you know, even saints having, mm -hmm. you know, they you know, they fall and you know they get back into and then fall again. Mm -hmm. But the the key here is that you must first repent. Yes. You got to change your mindset. That's a good one. You have to yes. realize that you know, hey, this isn't right. This, you know, having sex outside of marriage, you know, it's not God's will. Mm -hmm. And then you just have to pretty much ask God to forgive you, let him wash you, mm -hmm. like as you said, with the blood of Jesus. Yes. And then you can see those things becoming new. You can see yourself being restored. You can mm -hmm. see yourself, you know, being refreshed in a sense. Mm -hmm. And Pastor, and I, I just want to say this, if you will allow me to. Okay, sure. There are, you know, a lot of people in the church, as you mentioned, who are being you know, they, you know, believe God, mm -hmm. but, you know, you have some women and unfortunately nowadays you have some men who have been taken advantage even by the leadership in church. Yeah. And so you have these leadership who are praying on, you know, these women praying on these men and, you know, causing them to commit these, un, you know, unclean acts. To lose their virginity. Absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, I think it's important that we caution, you know, that leadership will let them know, you know, hey, God sees you. That's right. And if you don't stop, you know, judgment is going to be coming your way. Woo, that was loaded, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thunder and lightning came out of that. <laughs> I mean, but that's the serious it is, it is, you're right. Because, you're right. you know, here it is, you have this person, they want to do right. They want to be pure. Right. And then you have, you know, these leaders praying on them. Oh, wow. Man, Elder? Well, that that's, that's well, our final topic is... It's a big one, man. It's, it's all about a uh, Christian bedroom, okay, uh, being undefiled. So I guess my question would be to you, um, is there such a thing of a Christian bedroom being undefiled? Yeah, I guess the, the million dollar question is, you know, does anything go as long as you marry? There you go. And, you know, I'm, I'm here to say no. <laughs> No, anything doesn't go. You That's know, right. people, they, they want to use Hebrews 13 and 4. You know, marriage is honorable and all, mm -hmm. and, the, and the bed is undefiled. That's a good point. They want to hang on to the bed is undefiled, but they read over the first part quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Marriage is honorable, honorable and all. That's right. So are you honoring God if you bring in pornography into your bedroom? Mm -hmm. Are you honoring God if point. you bring in other couples and stuff to your bedroom? If you're doing things unnatural in your bedroom, are you honoring God mm -hmm. and doing that? And so, yes, you know, there are things that are permitted in the marriage bedroom, but not everything goes. You know, we're talking about, you know, um, the, the, these natural instruments that God has given to us to um, uh, please each other, you know, husband and wife. Right. But in the bedroom, um, 
I, I strongly believe that, you know, God, he sets uh, 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 limitations. You know, th th look, we have to honor God in every aspect of our lives, yeah. including sex. Yeah. Humans are the only one that want to try every shape, position, <laughs> every, you understand what I'm saying? Now, you right. don't look at animals. They got, I don't have to go there, do right, right. <laughs> they, right, you? Know, right, just, right. Just <laughs> have clean sex with your spouse Absolutely. and honor God with it. Now, it doesn't mean God have his eyes all in your bedroom watching. Right. right. Okay, <laughs> so it's not like that. Yeah, I think the biggest key is communication. That is true. You know, you have to communicate with your spouse. If you're doing something in the bed in the bedroom, you know, the Bible says that the bed is undefiled. That means it's not dirtyable. Right. That means there's no shame in it. Exactly. So if you're doing something in the bedroom that's causing you to feel shame, mm -hmm. that's causing you to feel degraded, that's a, that's then a, you know you flag. know that that's not of God. Exactly. So you need to communicate with your spouse and you know, hey, we can't do this, or hey, I feel comfortable doing this, what do you feel? I think communication is definitely the key. Yeah, because the body doesn't belong to you. Yeah. According to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, you know, for the husband, the body belongs to the wife. Mm -hmm. And for the wife, the husband's body, you know what I'm saying, vice right, versa. Right. So, it, you know, that communication piece is very, very important. Right. How can I please you? And how can you please me? Yeah. Well, at the table, we can discuss, no, I don't think God honors that. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So I'm not doing that. Okay? I right, don't care right. if it's your birthday, anniversary, <laughs> ain't no once a year thing. I'm not dishonoring God doing that. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll look you all the way. Yeah. I mean, you you got to communicate because, you know, you got guys who are learning these things, you know, watching, you know, pornography or doing these things that they learned prior to mm -hmm. being married, prior to, you know, being with God. And now they're trying to bring all this stuff into the bedroom. Oh, wow. That's, man. <laughs> well, that's it for today's show. Be sure to join us on our next show where we continue to discuss sex in the kingdom. To keep the word alive on Preach It, Preach It, goodbye and God bless.